digestion and absorption of carbohydrates. First, let us see about the digestion of carbohydrates. Up to 70% of our energy intake is from carbs. The diet, regular diet consists of a mixture of carbohydrates such as polysaccharides, disaccharides and monosaccharides. The most common polysaccharides that are part of our diet are the cellulose, starch and glycogen. The most common disaccharides that are part of our diet are the sucrose and lactose. Sucrose is from the sugar and lactose is from milk. Monosaccharides that are very common in our diet are the glucose and fructose. These monosaccharides do not require any further digestion before they can be absorbed. The polysaccharides are going to be primarily digested in the mouth and in the small intestine. Disaccharides are going to be primarily digested in the small intestine. Digestion of carbohydrates in mouth. The process of digestion of carbohydrate starts with the process of chewing. Mastication not only degrades the complex polysaccharides physically but also chemically. The process of mastication is going to stimulate the salivary glands to secrete the alpha salivary amylase. This alpha salivary amylase is specific for hydrolyzing alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. The polysaccharides that are part of our diet such as glycogen and starch has amylose and amylopectin. Now amylose is a linear structure which is a polymer of glucose with alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. Whereas amylopectin is not a linear structure but it is a branched structure and in the linear part it is going to have alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds and whenever it is branching at the branching points it is going to have alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. The salivary alpha amylase as I already told you hydrolyzes only the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. So the process of mastication is going to secrete the salivary alpha amylase and it is going to hydrolyze only the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds that are present in the amylose and amylopectin which are part of starch and glycogen. So these polysaccharides are now going to be hydrolyzed and they are going to be broken down into smaller pieces. What are the smaller pieces? It can be an oligosaccharide such as dextrin, it can be a trisaccharide such as maltotriose and it can be disaccharides such as isomaltose and maltose. Now this oligosaccharide dextrin, dextrin is a oligosaccharide which can contain up to 8 molecules of glucose connected by alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. It can also contain one or more 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. The process of digestion of carbohydrates temporarily halts in the stomach. This is because of the acidic environment that is present in the stomach. The salivary alpha amylase requires a neutral pH for its action and also availability of chloride ions, both of which are available in the mouth. But whereas when the food contents reach the stomach, the acidic environment is going to inactivate the salivary alpha amylase. Therefore, there is going to be no further hydrolysis of carbohydrates in the stomach. So therefore, there is going to be no digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach. Digestion of carbohydrates in the small intestine. As the acidic contents of the stomach enter the small intestine, this acidic chyme is going to stimulate the secretion of secretin and cholecystokinin. Secretin is going to stimulate pancreas and liver to secrete the bicarbonates. These bicarbonates are going to neutralize the acidic chyme. Cholecystokinin is going to stimulate the secretion of exocrine pancreas and the intestinal digestive enzymes. The exocrine pancreas is going to secrete the pancreatic alpha amylase. Pancreatic alpha amylase is a isoenzyme of salivary alpha amylase and has a similar action that is they are going to hydrolyze the alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. Dextrins are going to be further hydrolyzed by the action of pancreatic alpha amylase and they are going to yield limit dextrins and 
disaccharides such as maltose and isomaltose. These limit dextrins are oligosaccharides which has 3 to 5 glucose residues and can have alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds as well as alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. Now limit dextrins and the other disaccharides are going to be digested by the help of the intestinal digestive enzymes. These intestinal digestive enzymes are majorly disaccharidases except for the alpha limit dextrinase. Now the action of disaccharidases are going to hydrolyze the disaccharides to yield monosaccharides and the alpha limit dextrin is going to hydrolyze the limit dextrins to yield monosaccharides. Glucose, fructose, galactose and mannose are now the products of digestion of carbohydrates in the small intestine and they are now ready for absorption. So to summarize the process of digestion, the process of digestion of carbohydrates starts from the mouth. Mastication process induces the secretion of salivary alpha amylase which acts on the polysaccharides, hydrolyzes the polysaccharides to form dextrins, trisaccharides and disaccharides. There is no digestion of disaccharides or monosaccharides in the mouth. There is no digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach because of the acidic environment that is prevailing in the stomach. Further digestion takes place in the small intestine where the dextrins are further hydrolyzed by the action of the pancreatic alpha amylase. Then comes the action of the disaccharidases and the alpha limit dextrinase which hydrolyze the dextrin, limit dextrin and the disaccharides to yield monosaccharides. <laughs>